and he measured the distance from the pole to the wall. And that's where we got the 25 feet. This location simply does not comply with the town's wireless ordinance, which requires antennas to be located at a minimum 125 feet from the closest residence. The peak RF microwave radiation readings from 4G so-called small cell towers installed in downtown Palo Alto are actually 100 to 1,000 times higher than the average RF readings provided by Hammett. So they're not congruent. Because of the distance to my parents' property, that this encroaches on the land, airspace, and the home itself. This removes the right, the homeowner's right to live on their own land. This is irrefutable and should overrule any RF report given by Verizon. Nick, thank you very much for the information. Do you guys want this? The next, no, no, please, please, no, 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 please don't do that. You could have done for Danville what Fairfax, Mill Valley, and Monterey did and created a better, more protective wireless ordinance. You had telecom law firm write ours. Telecom law represents government entities and industry. They don't represent the families who live in those communities. They don't help you figure out how to best leverage our rights. Then the draft ordinance was sent to Verizon and AT&T. One of our planning commissioners, G. Mark Graham, worked for AT&T and just retired last October, never recused himself from these decisions to grant Verizon's request and gain their input on the ordinances. With nearly 600 signatures on the one petition alone, 1,500 on the other, this far outweighs the bogus text that Verizon claimed last month, saying something to the effect of, do you want better wireless service? Reply, yes. Everything Verizon has said is that this is a desire to have optimal coverage. And that's big. When we're talking about infringing your rights upon somebody else, usually you have to prove a need, that there's a need to go beyond. Now, the ordinance only speaks, I guess, to private property. But you guys kind of get to make that determination too. Why was that for private? And uh, but when the public goes so close to the private, there can be some determination on your guys' part. There's no readings here. All they're giving you is percentages. So there's no information to base these percentages off of. You make the measurements on a device just like this one, EMF frequency uh, measurement. The measurements that you get on this device is what it is. There's no math involved. Your exposure levels are what they are. And uh, we had another gentleman who was just speaking about the reports coming out of Santa Rosa and Palo Alto and other areas, which I did sp explain to you last time about the radiation levels that I've been getting myself. They're thousands of times higher. If you guys put this in the neighborhoods, it's going to come back and bite you. And especially since we're here warning you to have an independent engineer check for yourselves. For the safety of the people of this town, you need to do at least that much. All right, thank you very much. The next speaker, no, no, please, no, no. Nick's kids play in that backyard. That's, that's really close. We, we really don't know of what the risk is when it's that close to people. And I feel like you guys have backed yourself into a corner. They just want this to go very quickly. They want you to make a decision today because they need to move forward quickly. The thing that they have on their side right now is the ignorance of the general public, and that's not going to happen for very long. All of us are going to be aware of the real implications of these, especially when it's not just one. It's going to be many. Keep Danville, Alamo, cancer-free. No 5G. Social media needs to be employed strategically. Flyers need to be handed out at every public opportunity. The public needs to be made aware of the radiation and potential uh, cancer dangers of 5G. By the way, Brentwood, an affluent city in Southern California, much like Danville, did this and defeated Verizon. The gloves need now to come off. It's time to make this issue number one, given, the da given its long-term dangers. In the end... Uh, the money, the permit fees are just blood money. Please drop your Verizon cell service now. That's what they understand. Thanks for your time. Good. Daniel, thank you for the comments. Please. No, no, no. Everyone in here needs to know this article, this report, declassified, approved release by the U.S. government. Biological effect of millimeter radio waves. Morphological, functional, and biochemical studies conducted in humans and animals revealed that millimeter waves, which 5G will be using, cause changes in the body manifested in structural alterations in the skin and internal organs. These organisms were only exposed for 15 minutes daily in the course of 60 days, not 24-7, 365. The conversation of health has to be included in this conversation of 5G. For it to be excluded from all of these people is downright, excuse my French, and I won't say it because there are children don't, don't in the room. Thanks, but Sarah. it's got Sarah, to be included. can you wrap this up, please? 
Why are you not listening to all of these experts in your town? You've got so many bright people, educated people that are living here. Why are you not protecting us? Not protecting our children? Why would you let them approve this 25 feet from someone's house? I don't understand. I, that is truly what I want the question for. Is why not push back? What's stopping you? Why are you approving this today? Please answer the question. If this is to promote business, why aren't these downtown? Why aren't these by our businesses? I work out of my home. I, I get self-service just fine. How are you gonna keep it out of these neighborhoods? This is all of our children. These are all of our people. This is the last time that we can defend ourselves. It's you, you are our defense. Are you gonna stand up for us? And if not, why not? Help us. That's what you're here to do. Help us. Stephanie, thank you very much. So just an out loud discussion. Um, what will we accomplish um, if we deny this and we deny it based on that it's not least intrusive, it um, doesn't meet the intent of our ordinance in terms of minimum setback. It sets a precedence that, you know, we're just not going to be bullied. We've lost local control. We have, please, no, no. We've lost local control. And this says, you know what, we're sick of this and we're not going to just sit here and just be bowled over. We say no, we play the cards out. You know, we've been in lawsuits before. We're actually pretty good at it sometimes. If we deny this because it doesn't meet our ordinance of least intrusive of this. I think we ought to do it. And, and, and I think I'm going to second that. And, and I think we you haven't to, denied my motion. I, just, I don't want to say it's been shoved down our throats, but it has been. We've lost complete local control or we're losing so much of it. This, if nothing else, just puts us in a position that says, you know what? We're a little tired of this. We, we're, if you're going to come to the town of Danville, don't make this room full of people doesn't, that are angry. You know, because our job is to protect the town of Danville. And, you know, we may be spending some money here, and I'm okay with that. I'm actually okay with it because it'll set, it'll set in place how we feel in the town of Danville when what we think is right. The point is, is to go out there and talk to your state legislators and make sure that they understand that we, as a town of Danville, deserve to tell people where we want to put these things, not have them dictate to us. So the vote is no for my part. I'm a strong proponent of having these in the right of way for utilities, and I won't look forward on being on Bob Fish's uh, uh, next door tomorrow, but I truly believe those are my values for utilities.